Hey, good morning everybody. It's JB the Ranch Mechanic coming at you today on a nice chilly December day. I believe it is Thursday, December 12th, 2019. Um, and despite the steam coming off of my breath right now, it's actually pretty warm today. It's about 37 degrees right now. It's supposed to get up near 50. We had more snow on Thanksgiving than we do right now. It's supposed to be raining all day. As you can see, everything is wet. Um, and things have been busy for me. Um, and I know I don't film in the shop a whole lot, but if you're kind of in tune with uh, kind of how it's laid out in here, you'll notice that there have been some changes here. There's a whole bunch more space back behind where I'm sitting here. This is our main welding slash workbench. Nice uh, half inch thick slab of steel here that's unfortunately not completely flat, but whatever. Um, behind me here, you'll notice that there is a lot more room because our two uh, big list of toolboxes that we keep all of our spare parts and fasteners and nuts and bolts and whatever in. They were right next to each other right here, and Dave's toolbox, the other gentleman that I work with, was back here. As you can see, Dave's toolbox is no longer there. The reason for that is because Dave has left us. He's left the ranch. His wife is a nurse practitioner, and she took a job at a hospital several hours away from here. I've done the long distance thing before. It sucks. I get it. But unfortunately, that leaves me running the entire show here. I am now the lead mechanic for this gigantic cattle ranch and doing it all by myself. So if my stress level wasn't high before, it's a little bit elevated now. Um, this is supposed to be the slow part of the year, but because I'm doing everything by myself, um, I'm still trying to get things wrapped up for the end of the season. So it's been a little bit hectic, but that's not the purpose of this video today. Uh, today, I wanted to show you something that I'm very excited about. Um, a new addition to the shop that I have been begging for for over a year and a half. And we got a new welder. Um, and it's right here underneath this fancy black faux leather cover. So let me take that off. Since I'm in a Quonset hut, when it rains outside, it rains inside. So that's why I have the cover on, even though we're in here. But, voila! Alright, so how many of you just threw up in your mouth a little bit because I uncovered a big green welder? And not something red or blue. Yes, that is right. We uh, splurged on Everlast Power MTS 251 SI. Now, don't get me wrong. I know how you guys, a lot of you guys probably feel. If you're professional fabricators, welders, I get that you're diehard red and blue fans. So am I. I cut my teeth on Miller equipment. Okay, I love Miller stuff. All of our other equipment here is Miller. But in order to get the functionality of this machine in something made by Miller or Lincoln, we'd be looking at four or five grand. Okay, this is a, a multi-process machine. It'll run MIG, DC TIG, and stick. And the reason that we went this route with a multi-process machine is kind of twofold. One, we have very specific needs. We don't weld a whole lot. Um, this is not a, a, a fabrication job shop or anything. But when we need welders, we really need welders. Because as you can see, this is, this is a ranch. This is a cattle ranch. We have lots of heavy equipment, lots of heavy material we need to weld. We have a little Millermatic 140 behind us, which is a 120 volt welder that cannot handle the heavier duty fabrication stuff. In order for us to do that here in the shop, I have to get out our, our Miller Bobcat 225, which is a gas generator welder, and set that thing up with a suitcase in order to run MIG. Now, the problem with that is that A, the 225 is really powerful, but it's really noisy. It's a gas generator, all right? And it's got one odd leads that are 50 feet long each, plus the leads for the suitcase if I want to set up for MIG. We need a gigantic gas line to go from the bottle over to the bobcat, and it's just, it's kind of a pain to set all that up and tear it down for a simple MIG job. And another thing that happened is um, last year, last summer, I was doing some hard facing, and I was using our stick welder for that. We did this really old school, cheap uh, Miller, I think it was a Miller Thunderbolt buzz box from like the late 70s, <laughs> and that thing literally blew up in my hand. I was doing some hard facing, and all of a sudden my rod stuck and it buzzed really loudly and then I look over and lift my helmet and sparks would just start shooting out the bottom of the machine. So that thing got tossed in the junk pile, unfortunately. So we've been without a decent MIG welder that will actually handle what we're doing. We've been without a stick welder that will handle anything. That was a 240 volt welder and it's junk. Um, and we've never had a TIG welder here, period. And when I was still in the Air Force, I was a damn good TIG welder. I was proud of that. Um, it's been a long time since I've done any TIG welding. So I'm, and even though this is not an ACDC TIG welding machine, this will only weld steel, we don't do anything with aluminum around here because it just doesn't hold up. So that's okay. It's DC TIG only, but I'm really excited about having a, a machine that's capable of running TIG again. So 
Um, you got a super deal on this. Like I said, in order to get all the functionality that this thing provides in a Miller machine, we would have been looking probably between three and four grand, okay? Now, I know that they make the Miller, the Multimatic 215, but in order for us to get that and have all the TIG capability, you gotta spend another four or 500 bucks just for the TIG package. So that puts it over $2,000. This thing we got on sale for 1,350 bucks. By the time I bought the cover for it and paid the freight, we were only at like 1,450. So with the Boss Pinch and Pennies lately, this was a good option for us. And we don't do a whole lot of heavy duty, you know, welding all the time type stuff, but over the winter time, that's when we catch up and kind of do some repairs and whatnot. So it's really nice for us to have this kind of capability in the shop all of a sudden. So I'm really excited about it. But the problem is, and now that I've been rambling for like five minutes, the problem is um, we don't have a cart that will fit this thing. The little cart over there for the Millermatic 140 is way too small. This thing is about a foot longer than the Millermatic. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I've got, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I have some, some steel, some square tubing, some uh, angle iron, and a really long chunk of bigger uh, square tubing on the floor over here. I had our little torpedo heater turned on to kind of warm that stuff up to get it ready to cut and weld, but uh, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm just gonna start fabbing up something real quick, make a cart for this thing. Now, I know there are a lot of really good options out there for pre-manufactured carts. You know, Eastwood makes a nice one, a couple of different nice ones, actually. You can get one from Blue Point. You can even go to Harbor Freight and get one of those warrior carts, a gigantic deal with all the drawers and everything on it for like 400 bucks. I wanted to kind of something in between. Um, I definitely want something that will accommodate two bottles because you can't run C25 if you're doing TIG. You gotta have, we're gonna run 100% argon or maybe some specialty gases, some trimix or whatever if you're doing certain stuff. So I wanted to build a cart that will accommodate two different welding bottles for the different gases that we're gonna need. And I'm also going to try to find a Y adapter that will plug into the back of the machine because there's only one gas input on this thing. That's the only thing that I don't quite like about it. This thing's brand new. Literally, we've had it for a couple days. I haven't even put a spool in it yet. I've just turned it on to make sure it fires up. And I've got it off the floor because it's raining and I didn't want it to get wet. So I don't have any opinions one way or the other on the machine yet because I haven't used it yet. But I need to try to find a way to get two different types of gas going into that thing with little shutoffs at each, at each Y. That way I can just open one valve and close the other for switching processes. I don't know if anything like that exists. I'll have to look into it. I've never had a multi-process machine before, so I've never had to worry about that. So anyway, um, that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, it's a rainy day today, it's a shop day. The only benefit that I can see of Dave leaving is that I get his machine. I've been upgraded from my 2006 Honda Rincon with a whole bunch of miles on it to a 2017 Honda Pioneer 1000 EPS also with a whole bunch of miles on it, but it's a much nicer machine. So no more four-wheelers. I actually get to ride around in a side-by-side, -side, so that's fun. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started cutting and doing some other stuff and just trying to see what I can come up with. So, All right, guys, just a little update here on the welding cart project. Uh, not moving too quick on it. It's uh, been a few days since I filmed that last segment. And I grabbed the base uh, welded together now, and uh, as you can see, I'm just cutting out my uh, caster plates to bolt these nice heavy duty steel X casters on. Um, and then I have the, this is the, the rear section of it right here. So my axle, which is sitting in bubble wrap over there, it's just a, a piece of three quarter inch rod that I ordered that's zinc plated. Um, what I'll do is uh, I'll get, once I get these welds uh, ground down, I will punch a hole, a three quarter inch hole in the center of this, run that rod through after I cut it to length and then just tack the rod in place because the wheels that I have for the back are actually like, uh, I don't know if they'd be considered wheelbarrow wheels or what, but they have little bearings on the inside. So the bearings and the wheels will actually turn. So it's not necessary to have any bearings inside the cart itself, which is nice. So I'll just tack the rod in place. Um, what I'll do, it's five eighths diameter on the, uh, the bearings for the wheels. So I got the, the three quarter inch rod just so I could turn it down on the lathe and have a little, a nice little shoulder for that wheel to butt up against. And then I'll thread the outside of it and put a washer and a nut on the other side of that bearing to hold the wheel on once I get everything centered and then I'll just tack that rod in place so the rod won't go anywhere um, and it'll be supported by this tube. So yeah, that's basically as far as I've gotten. First impressions of welding with the uh, Everlast 251 SI are fantastic. I turned the thing on, I got it fired up, I just kind of ran the hose from the Miller the Miller 140's gas bottle over to the, the uh, 251 here and I turned it on to synergic mode forgot what I set it for at first. I think it was like 120 amps at 20 volts. And it was just cramming the wire into this thing. My beads were really, really wide and ropey and everything. And 
didn't look too good and then I realized that I had the synergic setting. The welder, when you set it for synergic, it defaults to 023 uh, diameter wire and uh, I'm running 035 uh, ER70S6. So uh, yeah, I had once I changed that and got it dialed in, I mean, the welds are just beautiful. Um, I'm super happy about it. Um, everything is nice and flat, everything's nice and square. Uh, another thing uh, that I found very helpful, especially for doing stuff like end caps or whatever, I have these uh, strong hand magnetic clamps. I've been seeing a lot of advertisements for these that are for the Chinese version of these. I think these are all made in China, but strong hand is the original developer of these things. And they're a U.S. company, so I like supporting them whenever I can. Um, I've been seeing a lot of ads on Instagram for these things for like, you know, get four for $36, blah, blah, blah. Well, you can get four of these, two different sizes, two small ones like this and two slightly larger ones like this. They come in a four pack on Amazon for like 24 bucks. Buy the real deal on Amazon. Don't buy these Chinese knockoffs. But they're invaluable for doing stuff like this, especially end caps and whatnot, because you just set it up here like that. Take your end cap. It's not going to sit very flat now because I have a bunch of weld on there, but it just holds the end cap perfectly. So you can tack the tack that'll hold that end cap in place, and you can tack it in and then take this off and run your welds. So I'm uh, that's not a hole. That's just some glass that chipped off there. Um, but I'm super happy with the way that turned out. The welds are fantastic. Um, so yeah, I mean, I haven't done a whole lot of welding with it. I've just tacked this thing and done a few welds on the uh, the base frame for the cart. So time will tell how it actually holds up. Uh, got the old uh, thermodynamics plasma cutter out. Cut some base plates for the casters here. I'm about to get these welded on. Um, and that's it so far. And that's The sun's starting to go down. It's getting late, so... Um, I'm probably just going to get the uh, the caster plates welded on today and, and call it good. And uh, I'll film more as I complete more. Stay tuned. All right, guys. It's uh, <clears throat> Friday, December 27th. Um, it's been a little bit since I worked on this. Obviously, uh, Christmas was on Wednesday. If you are of the Christian faith, I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. If you are not of that faith, I hope that you had a... A happy Kwanzaa or Happy Hanukkah or whatever it is that you celebrate. And if you don't celebrate anything, I hope that you had at least a nice day off with family um, and or friends or food or all of the above. Anyway, obviously made some good progress on this thing. Uh, I got the wheels on. I got most of it done. Really the only things that I need to do, um, I'm going to take some of that one by one bar and just make a few support brackets right here that go from corner to corner on each side to kind of support the bottle rack a little bit. Um, I was going to put another beam in the middle here to support the weight of the bottles, but this 14 gauge sheet metal that I'm using is really stout and I am confident that once I get it welded on, I'm not going to have to worry about supporting it. It is very, very thick and very strong. I did a quick little test fit with this piece of this cutoff that I cut off the end of the tray here to for the bottom. And I just set it on there. And even with nothing supporting it in the middle here, it barely even flex down with nothing holding it up. So I'm confident that when I get a sheet cut for that and get it welded on, it's not going to need anything. And if I end up discovering later that it really does need to have some support, I will uh, obviously flip this thing over and just weld a quick little brace on the bottom. So I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to get those support braces cut. And I got the divider made for the bottle rack here. Um, it's just a piece of three by three angle. So yeah, I'm kind of in the final phases of, of getting everything fabbed up here. Got to make those brackets for the bottle rack, like I said. Got to get the sheet cut for the top tray there where the welder's going to sit. Got to get a sheet cut for the actual bottle rack where the bottles are going to sit. Um, and then it's just really a matter of uh, doing the finishing touches. I'm going to put some chain in the middle there. I'm going to weld a section of chain on and weld some hooks on here. Weld a couple of like uh, almost like mooring cleat type things. I'm going to make some out of some round bar just to uh, hang the, the TIG hose, the stinger for the MIG gun, the ground strap, all that stuff. Maybe make a couple of loops for TIG rod, that kind of thing. Anyway, that's where we're at for now. I'm hoping to get all the welding done today and get some primer on it and then maybe paint it on Monday. All right. That's the update. It's got wheels, it rolls, it moves, everything is square, it looks really good. Um, I'm happy with it so far. I'm going to try to get the fab done today and move on from there. Well guys, another day and uh, we're still chipping away at this thing. It's about 2 p.m. on Saturday. I've been at it for several hours now, just kind of doing finishing touches. Got the handle welded on the front. Got all the sheet metal cut out and, and welded on. Got the bottle rack finished up. Um, 
And, you know, I have got to mess around with the TIG welder a little bit more, and, you know, it's fun. I really miss doing TIG, so not the prettiest uh, welds in the world, but, you know, for considering the fact that I haven't really run a TIG torch in about 14 years, um, it's kind of coming back to me. I only stuck the tungsten a couple of times. Um, but I really, so far, am really enjoying this welder. Um, the capabilities it's providing are fantastic. Um, I've never used a TIG torch with this handle-mounted contactor before, but this thing is great for doing this kind of work because you don't have to worry about setting up a foot pedal and having that getting in the way, and, you know, you're kneeling down and trying to do all this stuff in position, you know, with the cart. Um, it's not like I can put this thing up on the table and move the cart where I need it to go. I kind of have to weld to it, you know, so... Having the contact around there, it's just like a foot pedal, and you can you can adjust your uh, your ramp up and ramp down amperage and everything, but you just press this and go. It's just like having a foot pedal, except you can't control the heat. It's just on off. So that's that's what I was saying. You can kind of set it to have your uh, ramp up and ramp down voltage if you're welding something more sensitive to cracking. You know, if you're doing stainless or Inconel or titanium or something. But uh, yeah, I'm really just super happy with. A, how the cart's turning out, and B, how well the welder's performing. So I really think it was a good decision to get that. So um, it's not a Miller. There are some little little things, like the tungsten doesn't stay perfectly centered in the torch. You know, it's uh, the collet is not the greatest. But, you know, considering it's just right out of the box, and these are the accessories that Everlast provided with the uh, unit, it's more than adequate for stuff that we're doing here. I mean, I'm not welding aerospace-grade parts here, so... Um, I'm really happy with how everything's kind of coming together here. But it's Saturday, like I said, and I'm not even really technically supposed to be working today. But I wanted to kind of try to get this wrapped up as best I could. So not going to get it done today, unfortunately, but it's pretty much ready for paint. I just got to take this round bar here and, and bend a few uh, hooks to hang the, the welding leads and the ground, the ground uh, cable and everything on. And then I got to get some chain and some hooks to weld to the uh, center section there and then Weld some hooks on each side so that I can strap the bottles in and keep that all safe. So, anyway, it's looking good. I'm happy with it. I think Monday or Tuesday I'll probably be ready to paint it. Just got to get these last little odds and ends done. But for now, I'm going to go home. So, we'll uh, get more of this done on Monday. All right, everybody. All the fabrication is done. I just slapped a coat of primer on this thing. And then I'll be hitting it with some uh, Rust-Oleum hammered uh, flat black. Once the primer is dried here in a few minutes, this is the final iteration. I know I've been kind of going back and looking over all my footage and I've done a terrible job of, of filming this as it's gone together. But basically, as you can see, I've got two hooks here and then a hook on either side here. Since it's a multi-process machine, the top two hooks are for your ground lead and for whatever process you're running. So your TIG torch, your MIG torch, your, um, or your stick stinger. And the other two that aren't being used will hang back here. As you can also see, I've got a couple of pieces of pipe welded onto each side here. And that will allow uh, your standard length uh, TIG rod tubes to slide right down in here and kind of be adjacent to the bottles back out of the way where they're not going to get in the way of anything hanging. Um, I may eventually build a small mount down here at the bottom to mount the plasma cutter tube. But for now, I think we'll just kind of throw it on there and do what we need to do with it. Um, I could, you know, change things as we use it and figure out what exactly we need, but that's pretty much it. As you can see, the axle situation in the rear did not turn out how I had hoped. Um, I had to put some uh, drop blocks down there, and then instead of the axle going all the way across, I just cut it to length and then cut threads on the end of it with my lathe. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because it's all taped off, but... I'll kind of go into more detail on that during a final assembly here, but uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. Got the bottle rack on there. Ended up using some 3 8 plate instead of the uh, square tubing because in order to cut an angle from here to here, that's a super steep angle for square tubing, and my, uh, my evolution saw over there doesn't have the capability of cutting an angle that steep. So ended up just cutting some uh, triangular gussets with the plasma cutter and used that. Um, that's pretty much it. Everything else is done. I'm just going to let this primer dry for a few minutes, throw some uh, paint on top, and let it cure. And then the next thing you see will be final assembly. So, moving right along.
All right, guys, here we go. Of course, I wanted to test fit everything to make sure my handle wasn't going to get in the way and blah, blah, blah. And that quickly turned into me just completely loading the card up and doing final assembly. And of course, I didn't have the camera rolling for that. The only thing left that I still need to put on, which the boss is picking up in town right now, are some hooks and some safety chain to hold the bottles on. Other than that, we are done. Everything fits great. Everything looks good. The height is perfect, so you can just walk right up to it and see your screen clearly. Not have to worry about, you know, bending that way down or kneeling over. You just mess with your settings or whatever, close your lid and go. So I'm really happy with it. As you can see, the hooks are working out exactly as they're supposed to. Got the MIG torch hooked up right here. Got my ground clamp and my main power cord for the welder hooked up right here. Stick stingers down there. TIG torch is over there. The only thing I really don't like about the way it's set up right now is the fact I don't have any place, any dedicated place to store the tungsten or the, the TIG torch parts or my consumables on the MIG torch, anything like that. So what I think I'm gonna end up doing is fabbing up a little tray little slide out tray and I'll probably end up welding it underneath here so it'll pull out from this other side it'll just pull out sideways like so right now I just have some welding arrow magnets uh, 45 degree magnets hanging from right there but those can be easily moved they'll stick to whatever um, yeah I am super happy with this everyone who's seen it is uh, pretty uh, psyched about it that you know I made this in-house and I still spent some some money on the steel and everything, but a lot of the bigger the bigger tubing was stuff from the scrapyard. So I had to buy the plate and smaller and smaller square tubing and the angle iron and all that. But pretty much, uh, it's turned out exactly how I wanted it to. Um, going into a little bit more detail about why I needed to make a change to the rear here is that um, I when I was doing my calculations, I somehow must have developed a case of dyslexia and did everything backwards. So I ordered the bigger tires for the rear. And then I ordered casters that were two inches smaller than that. Some, these are 10 inch tires and I ordered some eight inch casters for the front, but I, did, I neglected to take into account that the diameter of the wheel does not take into account the drop height of the caster brace, the part that hangs down that actually bolts to the wheel. So when I tried to bolt those 10 inch casters on there, um, the cart was like doing a doing a wheelie. The front was way too high, and that was not going to be safe for the uh, bottles. So I ended up putting some drop blocks down here, and then I ordered some six or six and a half inch steel X casters to replace the eight inch ones. The eight inch ones are still sitting over on the bench, and that got things pretty level. It still sits a little bit high in the front, which is fine. That's not a big deal to me. It's really not noticeable, especially on this freaking floor. I mean, look at this. <laughs> you guys have seen the shop floor. You know how old it is. It's uh, it's been around a while. So I'm not terribly worried about that, but um, as you can see what I did with the axles here, just welded on another set of uh, two by two tubing. And then I ended up, instead of doing three quarter inch rod and cutting a shoulder on it, I just didn't have the right tooling for my lathe. It wasn't working with the ceramic carbide that I had. So um, rather than worrying about ordering high speed steel and, and grinding a tool bit and all that other crap, I just bought some five eighths inch rod at Home Depot and then machined some little spacers for the inside and the outside of it. That way the nut, actually engages on the uh, the spinning part of the bearing and not the outer race because without these on the inside and the outside you'd just be putting all of your pressure on the outer race and it would just be dragging so these are the threads that I cut 5 8 11 just cut those on the lathe on both sides and then just parted off some of these spacers drilled a hole for clearance and then just parted them off and so that was pretty simple so that's how that works. I'm just throwing some Loctite on there now and then tighten everything up. I already did the other side, but there it is, guys. Um, as you can see, we got the TIG rod uh, tubes in there on either side. And I did end up finding a, uh, a two-port, uh, two-into-one adapter on Amazon that has little valves. So I've got the smaller bottle of 100% Argon there to give clearance for the fans and for the adapter because we'll have two hoses coming in at a Y with little shutoff valves on each side. So having the smaller bottle over here gives us plenty of room to mess with that and change gases for your different uh, processes and uh, leaves clearance for the fans so the you know, machine doesn't overheat or you know gets plenty of airflow. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's pretty much done. Like I said, just waiting on the safety chains and that is it. So I think I'm going to wrap this uh, little project up 
If you have any questions about the parts that I used or anything like that, let me know. I'll try to annotate most of that in the description. That way you guys know exactly what it is I used and where I got it. Most of this came from Amazon as far as the, the bolt-on stuff. And then I ordered all of my steel from uh, OnlineMetals.com. Um, again, not affiliated. It's just a place that typically has good prices and good shipping. Um, yeah, there's lots of options, but I typically use Online Metals. So there it is, guys. Thank you again for watching, everybody. I really appreciate you uh, subscribing to the channel and taking a look at my projects. I hope you all have a wonderful day and a very safe and happy new year. I wish you all the best going into 2020. And uh, please, if you guys end up drinking for the holiday, call an Uber, call a taxi. Don't drive. Don't endanger your life or the life of anybody else that you know or may not even know. Uh, being a former police officer, I have seen way too many fatal crashes caused by drugs and alcohol. So please, just a quick PSA from me to you, be safe. Thank you again for watching, everybody. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you. Have a great day. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Happy New Year, guys. Thanks for watching. Remember, you drink, you drive, you lose. Over the limit, under arrest. Drive hammered and get tossed in the slammer. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Those who host lose the most. Meth. Not even once. Only you can prevent forest fires. I am Ron Burgundy. <laughs> All right, guys, seriously, I know I was joking around there quite a bit, but I was serious when I said before I've seen a lot of fatal accidents as a result of drugs and alcohol, not wearing seatbelts, uh, people thinking that they're fine when they're really not fine. You need to know your own limits, and you need to either have a designated driver or you need to call a taxi, call an Uber. Ubers are cheap, guys. Lyft, whatever. Just... Don't get behind the wheel if you're impaired in any way. I don't want anyone getting killed tonight that watches my channel, all right? Or anyone. If I could know that everyone was going to be 100% safe on New Year's Eve, that'd be a great day for me. But just please, guys, I hope you party hard and have a great New Year's, but do it safely. Stay at home. Go to a friend's house and crash there. Or like I said, have a designated driver, get a taxi, get an Uber, get a lift, get whatever. Just don't get behind the wheel if you're going to be a danger to yourself or anybody else, all right? Please do that for me. But anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful 2019, and I wish every single one of you all the best going into 2020. You guys are awesome. Thank you for watching the channel. Be safe tonight, and have a wonderful New Year's. We'll see you on the next one.